Matthew chapter 28, if you will. Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. Please, be sure to get our card. Jonathan, grow up so much. Okay, but we don't waste the Lord's resources, amen? We still need prayer, and uh, Jonathan will continue to grow, amen? Maybe he'll play for Alabama one of these days. You, you, you North Carolinians, come on. When did you expect that Alabama would be playing the Final Four and we are in Carolinas watching? <laughs> well, state made there, so that, that was a good, good compensation, amen? But I know Brother Philip was not happy that state made there, so we'll not talk about that. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, get the prayer reminder and the prayer card. And uh, I never did that in American church. I have done that in Brazil several times and worked quite well. But uh, I'll just make a motion. I'll not call the business meeting of the church. I'll not do that, but I'll make a motion that this church will send Pastor and Miss Sharon there to Cape Verde to minister to the couples. Second? All in favor? Amen. Good. We, 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 we just made a motion. <laughs> Nothing else. Just a motion. Okay? And I have several to support. We would we'll love to have them there. Uh, commission without C will result in omission. Take the letter C out of commission, and we are in deep trouble. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be at your house. Thank you that you have the hands on this ministry and continue to go on for the cause of Christ. Continue to bless Pastor and all the others that are here helping in the school and even Brother Tim as he's there in Brazil ministry today, that you bless him as well. Help each one of us to be doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. and amen. Matthew chapter 28. Much has been spoken of what is called the Great Commission. We are very familiarized with this text. But tonight, I want you to consider some aspects that perhaps have been left out. And uh, for instance, a clear analysis of the word shows us that we have a prefix. Now I'm talking like I know English. Mr. Principal, how do you like that? Prefix. What is the prefix? Calm. Great calm mission. With the word mission. Calm means together. Means with. I know calm because I speak Portuguese and calm comes from Portuguese, okay? But the text of Matthew 28 presents us very clear the clear fact in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are not doing the Great Commission on our own, by ourselves. Right. If you are there on chapter 28, the Lord Jesus says very clear on the last part of the verse 20, and lo, I am with you right. always, Amen. even to the end of the world. So, Jesus is together with you and I as we fulfill his given mission. Yeah. However, your language, the English language, presents us with an even greater reality that if we miss it, could affect our approach and actions regard to this Jesus-given great commission. For instance, if we leave out one letter, the first letter, C. The spell might be different, but the word will be transformed into omission. Yeah. Online, on Google, I found a very simple but extremely important meaning of this word omission, something neglect or left, yeah. apathy toward or neglect of duty. Yeah. The act of omitting, the state of being omitted. For sure that is true about the Great Commission. If we leave out a very import, important action, C. You see how I know English? I play with the letter and I play with the verb. <laughs> ha! 
I made it. C and C is the same thing, okay? If we miss C, we are going to get ourselves in trouble. That is what is going to make us to be on the omission side of what Jesus asked us to do. A proper view, C, of the Great Commission is imperative. If we want to do what Jesus told, the way he commands, in the manner that he asked it. In John chapter 4, verse 35, I quote, Jesus made that very clear. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and, and then come harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are what? White already to harvest. Therefore, we need to see what the Lord has for us to view if we want to fulfill with his great commission and not fail in an omission. Consider then what we need to see. First of all, we need to see what? Amen. His word. More than one occasion, Jesus told the disciples what he expected of them. And here's one of them. This is one occasion that Jesus is telling them what to do. His words were very clear, summarized in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said there, go ye and preach the gospel. He said very clear. The key word, when you see the word, is the word manual. What is a manual? Manual is something that I don't like much to read, to tell you the truth. I got this machine yesterday to shave my hair. How do you like that, huh? Look good. And, and, and then I said, oh, Anne is not here. The If Anne is not there, guess who has to read the manual? Any volunteer? I have to read. And it has in Spanish. It was so funny. Oh, man, it's Spanish. Wow, that's nice. And then the other side was English, but it took me a while until I could find in English. But I did. Turn on the machine, and I think it's okay. <laughs> but I have to read that manual. You follow instructions. You follow guidelines. You follow the way you need to do something that you never have done before. Trust me, do you think I grew up shaving my hair? No, it fall by nature. <laughs> it, it did as it came, it went. So, I never had to learn that, but yesterday I have to, you know, but I have to read the manual. And this is what the Word of God helped us, because as the manual, you get the method. That's right. That's right. Observe here on Matthew 28, verse 19, go ye therefore, and do what? Teach nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Unfortunately, with my broken English, I want to sing at the end of the presentation, but I want to continue on showing the video to redeem the time. And you could not see the end of the video, that there's situations there that we were baptizing. We are doing what the manual told us to do. We are fulfilling with the method that is written before us. And that what Jesus told very clear, you keep the manual, and we are doing as he ordained us. Remember, I told you in Mark that he emphasized the need to go and what? Preach. In Luke, he told to be witnesses of these things. And also, it is the same Luke that record the last words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And there he again says, ye shall be witnesses unto me. Anybody above the Dick's line? Anybody from the north? Ma'am, let me teach you the way we say this verse in the south. We say, y'all be witnesses. <laughs> y'all, y'all be witnesses. It... He shall be a witness. It's simple. 
It's not that hard. And the Lord Jesus, when he emphasized in John the Great Commission, he even used another aspect of sending, as my Father had sent me, even so sent I who? You. I go to these churches, and do I look different? So I get there, and they say, oh, are you the missionary? I said, I said, Yes, are you not? <laughs> There's just two kinds of people here tonight. One is the missionary. I have met Jesus, and I saw what he did for me on my religious life when I pastored two churches, and I had religion, did not have a relationship. But on October the 2nd, 2004, I came down on my knee and I said, God, I refuse my ordination, I refuse my formation, I refuse my position, I consider all things but lost Amen. to gain Christ and be found in him. What a place to be found. So he saved me. Now I'm a missionary. I can tell anyone. I can tell anyone how they can be saved. South Carolina has nothing, you know, behind Georgia. Georgia, I heard on the news that they have the master this week. So all the South Carolinians said, don't worry none. We'll do the World Festival of Grits. Right there in St. George, outside of I-95. Guess what? I did not go to the master. I went to the World Festival of Grits. I mean, is the World Festival? They need somebody from Africa, amen? <laughs> I went there to make international the event. And I was there passing out gospel tracks. I heard of this minister, amazing uh, grace something, uh, and they talk about the doors, three things that God cannot do. And I was there, and I have a smiling track in my hand, and then passed the officer. I said, hey, officer, may I give you a smile? And he came, sure. I said, thank you so much for what you have doing. And I, I commend him for his work. And I said, do you know three things that God cannot do, God cannot lie, God cannot change, not like the weather, change all the time, but God doesn't. And God cannot allow anybody to go to heaven without being born again. I said, officer, are you 50, 75, or 100% sure you're going to heaven? He said, I'm 100% sure. I said, amen. And why so? I go to church every weekend. I said, sir, remember what I told you a minute ago? I was what? I did not go to church. I did church. Hmm. Had religion, officer, not had a relationship. And officer, let me tell you, I also go to prison. And it would break my heart seeing you as a law-abide citizen, a, law, a keeper of the law as well, missing heaven because of going to church and not to the right person. When, when I go to jail, I tell them, although they have sinned and break the law, they can be in peace with God if they repent and accept Jesus. Take this other gospel track and, and examine on your own. Are you with me? That's what is a missionary. I cannot be a hypocrite, be a missionary in Africa, and here I That's right. That's right. close my mouth. So the Bible is telling us, I send you. Yeah. Send me, That's send right. us. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 20, verse 21. So the word, the manual tells us what we must go teach, baptize, teaching all things Jesus commanded, preach, witness, send. That's not hard. That's right. You don't need to go to Harvard to learn all these things. Anyone here under the sound of my voice can do it. Well, we need to run. Consider second, we must see his world. Not only the word, but the globe, world. That's right. hmm. How come? Here the key word is map. The location of where we will fulfill with the Great Commission. Matthew 28, Jesus commanded that it ought to be done where? Go ye and teach the nations. All nations, even America. There was one that passed by yesterday. He was 100% sure that he's going to heaven because he was born in America. 
No, he must be born again. Even in America. I, hey, guess what? When I got born again, I was born again in America. I was getting ready to preach in two churches on Sunday. I cancel. I cancel. <laughs> Come on. Are you kidding me? I cancel. I did not know what I was going to do. And lo and behold, God did not save me because he needed me, needed his saving to cast me out. He saved me so he could use me. And that's what I want. So Jesus said in Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to whom? Every creature. Do you see it again? Preach it to whom? Every creature. It's not enough for us to go to all the world, but we must preach to every creature. That means politicians of all parties alike. Say amen. Say amen. All parties alike. We need to preach to them. Every man, every woman, even so-called transgender, so-called homosexuals. We cannot leave anyone out. We cannot segregate the gospel. It must reach out to every creature. Amen. Yes, amen. Luke even make it clear, point out that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Jesus in John said that God so loved who? The world. Hallelujah for that. He loved the world. Everyone and everybody. Don't ever forget Jesus' last word when he's playing the map. Jesus is playing the map. Remember his last words? And he shall be witness unto me both. Where? Yeah. In Jerusalem. That's right. Where is your Jerusalem? Raleigh? Yeah. You have a national pastor. Did you know that? He's a national. He speaks the language. He knows the culture. He can do a greater job than I, I dare even to attempt. He's reaching Jerusalem. But the map goes a little bit further. Oh, Judea. That's right. 48 plus 2. That's your Judea. And then where? Samaria, the neighbor countries. And unto the robust parts of the earth. That is the map, class. That's right. Don't you ever forget that. We have become familiar with the 1040 vision. Have we not? We talk about the 1040 window. Cape Verde is right there on the door of the 1040 window. You can look on the map. I know it. I look it. But it's about for churches, for you and I, for all Christians, to have a 50-50 vision yeah. given by Jesus. How? Remember, commission without sea will result in omission. Jesus let it clear that if we want to do what he commanded, we need to do 50% at home. Sometimes we forget that. Yeah. Not the church. The church has to start working. Arizona has to start work there on the west uh, coast. Uh, you are doing good. But some maybe are watching through the broadcast and they need to understand that. At least half of what we do must do at home. The light that shines farther abroad is the light that shines brighter at home. There is a sign right there as you come to this church. Just that phrase changed the, the, the life of my wife. She has eating disorder, anorexia, I guess is the name in English. She was not in peace with herself, and she came to church, and this lady told her, Oh, I'm so glad you are here. You came. She said, Really? Glad about me coming? So that's a good phrase. Amen. And I hope you are working as a tool in God's hand to change people's life right here. Don't send me to Cape Verde if you are not willing to reach Raleigh for Christ, North Carolina, or America. Don't be criticized, oh, America is bad. Oh, really? It's my fault, it's your fault, it's ours to claim. We need to do the job. Let's do it. 50% at home is, is, is not that hard. It's not that hard. We cannot aff afford to neglect one in spite of the other. Right. We need to do it. 
And if you ever wonder where is your Jerusalem, right there in the middle of Jerusalem, there's three letters, USA. Simple, huh? Simple. We can afford to neglect. Truth, truth must be said that if we take care of the ministry at home, we have a chance to impact the globe. There's a lady here in, somewhere in Raleigh. She works for American Airlines. 800 call, and I spoke to her, I witnessed to her, I pray with her, I send her to this church, and I, I don't know if she came or not. But you know what? When you dial the 800 number, sometimes you hit someone in India, <laughs> the Philippines, yeah. Mexico, Egypt. And, and now I do this. I answer, before, I, answer the, I used to answer the call, and, uh, uh, and then I'll let them talk, and then I'll start witness to them. But I, I don't do that any longer. I cannot afford so many calls a day. So as they, as they called, and, and I'm asking the Lord to bring to my mind that I need to pray for the, the callers, the telemarket, you know. And the other day I was sitting at lunch, and it came to my mind. I said, oh, Lord, bless that one that will call me today. And as I was eating and praying, the phone ring, and, and, I, and I left the table, and I went toward the phone. I said, I'm so glad you called. I was praying for you. Have you been born again? <laughs> the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And they hang up. But I read, I read, I read somewhere, I read somewhere that the word of God does not come back void. I read, I read that. The other day I prayed for Carol. Carol asked prayer. She said, no, nothing that has happened to me. I said, Carol, I'll pray for you. And the conversation ended. I was not going to buy insurance. Come on. <laughs> buy insurance? Are you threatening me with the heaven? Is that what you, you think I'm afraid of, dying, going to heaven? No, I'm not. So I'm not going to buy insurance, okay? Don't call me. Don't call me. But if you call me, I'll, I'll witness to you. Yesterday I was on the road. My pastor gave me a phone, a nice phone, the one that has the bite on the fruit. And, um, uh, 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 and I was come on, on the road, but I have not put everybody's name on, on, on the phone. So the phone rang, and, and the kids, if they have the phone, they already, you know, they already give it to me because they know I'm going to do what? To answer. So I got the phone. I said, have you been born again by the blood of the land? And he said, hey, man, brother. I said, excuse me, who is calling <laughs> I'm telling you, we cannot neglect here. We cannot. The mailman, he needs the good news. Right. Down the supermarket, there's so many automatized. They have automatized a way of living that sometimes we neglect. There's people there. We cannot afford that. That's right. The map shows us. There's a lot we can do right here, right now. Maybe teaching English as a second language. He knows that is a, uh, something that always I'm talking about. Use your phone wise. Your phone is smart. Be smart. God knows your number. It doesn't hurt you if you stop the TV a minute to answer that telemarket. Answer, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved? Have we been born again? Trust me. It will not take 30 seconds, and they will. Beep, 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 beep. But you have to do it. You are a missionary, are you not? Right. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you how you can be born again. Right. Oh, to every creature, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me, and may I faithfully do my part to win that soul for thee. Yes. Lord, may I love as you have loved the souls of those I know. And grant me the power from heaven above, thy love for them to show. Yeah. I told you this evening, first, we must see his word. Second, we must see his world. And now, there's a part on the Great Commission that sometimes is neglected. It's on verse 17. Are you there on Matthew 28, verse 17? And when they saw whom? Yeah. That's Jesus. They what? Worship him. We must see his wordness. 
When we see the word, we get the menu, we see the world, we obtain the map. When we see that he is worthy, we view his merit. One of the most overlooked aspects of the Great Commission is right here on verse 17. The Great Commission is about all nations, every creature, worshiping the true living God. The Great Commission is about proclaiming the glory of God around the globe, making every tribe, every nation, and every creature to know about the glory of the Lord. As the prophet Habakkuk said, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Amen. It's about God's glory. Yeah. He's worthy. You and I must worship him and him alone. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says clear, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. On chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible says, And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of what? Ever kindred. Maybe you have some kin of yours here. Every kindred, every family, and tongue, and people, and nation. On verse 12 and 13, the Bible says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing, and every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus is worthy. Yes, he is. No sacrifice could be too great for me to make for thee. If we see the word, we see the world. You understand? Facebook will show you the world, will show you the globe. And guess what? If we see that, what can we offer to this wilderness as we heard his sing? This is a word. What, what is here? We must offer them what is worthy to live for. And it's Jesus and Jesus alone. We sure can go teach, baptize, teaching all things he commands us, preach, witness, send, make impossible the fulfillment of the great commission. Avoid for sure it to become an omission. We are on year 2024. By God's grace, let us, you and I, to do more than ever before. Oh, yeah. Hey, time is ticking. Maybe this is the last time that we assemble together. Maybe. I don't know. But you know what? If this is my last day, my last week, I want to be fine, faithful. Amen. And I want to keep the word, looking at the one that next to me, trying to reach the world, because he is worthy and he alone. Amen. Let's stand upon our feet. Pastor is coming and he's going to pray for you and with you.